Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all feeling well today. I hope you guys had a great night last night. Um, happy hour was so much fun. I definitely want to do that again. Um, yeah, that's going to be great. So if you guys haven't already noticed, I have a fabulous new coffee mug. A very good friend of mine, she sent me um, just the suggestion that I should get it. And she didn't realize, like, she, I hadn't mentioned to her that I was thinking about getting a bunch of new cool mugs to use for morning coffee. And so when she sent me this one, or when she sent me, like, the, the link to this one, I was like, oh, my God. Oh my god, I have to buy this. Look, it's my favorite. Look, it's a unicorn, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. So, anyway, if you guys come across any cool mugs or anything that you think I might like, go ahead and send it. Send me, like, um, you know, a link to it or something, and I will pick one up, yeah? So, today is Tuesday, November 6th. It is voting day here in the United States. Please get on out there and let your voice be heard for those midterm elections. Yes, please, please, please. Let's get out there, guys, and let's do it. So this is going to be a general energy reading for today. This does not have to resonate with you today. You, it could resonate with you a week from now. It could resonate tomorrow. Doesn't really matter. Either way, these are the messages, or at least this is what Spirit wants to talk about for today. You could use this as, like, something to think about for the day, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. It is a general reading. It is not sign-specific. It is not love-specific. It is not career-specific. Okay? So, without said, and without further, with that said, <laughs> with that said, and without further ado, let's get Started. All right. Mm -hmm. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, November 6, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so the first thing I'm seeing is orange. Um, emotions might be running high today. For for some of you, yes, definitely. Emotions could be running high. Um, a lot of us are still, you know, dealing with some purges here. Um, 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 um. We do... We have a major, a big, big, big wave that's coming through uh, between the 4th and the 7th, so like through tomorrow. Um, apparently, you now this is information that, I'm, that I've received through Aluna Ash and her posts. Apparently, it's it may be a bit after, depending on where you are, depending on your location. When I woke up this morning... Um, and I was sitting in my bed, you know, meditating before I, you know, start making coffee and all that. My ears were ringing, like, really, like, a lot. Like, it was, it was a really high-pitched, really, really high-pitched ring. And actually, they're still kind of going right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's just a little more faint. Um, so downloads, purges, emotions are running high. But also, these could be good emotions, like someone could be feeling head over heels is what I'm hearing. Some of you could be in love with someone and, you know, today you're just really feeling it. Um, that's a good thing. And that's definitely a good change from all the icky emotions we've been feeling lately, right? All right. Tuesday. November 6th. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle one more time. I'm still seeing the blue that I was seeing yesterday. And that's communication. I'm, I, I'm hearing maybe someone is thinking about communicating, uh, is desiring communication. Maybe you're all up in your feels because you're not getting the communication that you desire, but that's really just your ego 
wrapped up in expectation, okay? So don't worry about that. All right, kids, let's see what we got for today. Tuesday, November 6th. So far, we've got the Queen of Pentacles, okay? What else? What else? So, aha, uh -huh, death. Okay, Scorpio season. So far, we've got Capricorn and we've got Scorpio on the table. So, give me a second here, guys. I just want to go a little more and see what we've got. Okay, now, the Hanged Man did come out in the pre shuffle this morning. Okay, at the, oh, look at that. All right, we're going to stop there. Under that, Underneath the deck, we've got the Nine of Pentacles. All right, so this is, in this deck, the key word here is rewards. Um, many of us are sitting nice and pretty in single status, which is a good thing. We're self-sufficient. We're doing what it is we need to do for ourselves. Um, we're abundant. That's good. We're either either we're in this position or we're working our way there. All right. We have the fool again. Ooh, look at that. Okay, the fool, the four of wands, and the ten and the wheel of the wheel of fortune. That's great. The ten of swords, the knight of pentacles, the seven of swords. Good lord. And then the hidden aspect is the four of swords. My my my. My, 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 you guys, what's going on here? There are a few different energies here. All right. This actually isn't as bad as it seems. <laughs> okay? So this is, this is really good. This is really, it's actually really nice. So over here, the, the, the main theme... All right, the main message here is that there is a new start that's coming, okay? That is being manifested, all right? And we were talking about this last night with um, in happy hour with that daily read, with the daily reading for yesterday, okay? The fool, we have the four of wands and the 10, I'm sorry, the wheel of fortune. Now, the four of wands is saying that you have a very stable foundation, okay? Four of Wands could also talk about union, all right? But what I'm seeing here, what this message is saying is that you have a really stable foundation. The wheel is turning, you know, cycles are changing, seasons are changing. Um, the wheel is turning in your favor because of the stable foundation. And it's like the springboard that's going to allow you to take this leap of faith, to start this new cycle, to get this new start, whatever. All right, Queen of Pentacles and Death. Now this is Capricorn and Scorpio energy, right? But what I'm seeing here is almost like it's an energy of almost like marriage. Um, sometimes death can symbolize marriage. Now in this in this deck, death is called transformation or the transformation, but it's basically the death card. And what I'm seeing here is someone preparing for a long-term relationship or someone that is of the Queen of Pentacles state, uh, nurturing, caring, loving, supportive, the mother type figure, the wife type figure, like wifey material. Um, someone is preparing for this. Someone's life is transforming, is changing in order for... <laughs> I'm hearing huge commitment. <laughs> Now, what I'm also getting, for some of you, you are transforming into this Queen of Pentacles. Some of us have been sitting in this position already, okay? And so you're, you're really getting ready with it. But some of you, this transition is stepping into this Queen of Pent Pentacles energy now. And this actually is mirroring the message that was coming through in the Twin Flame weekly reading this past Sunday of stepping into the under, a deeper understanding of unconditional love or divine love. Because this, because the Queen of Pentacles to me is the one queen that symbolizes 
unconditional divine love the most on this earthly plane because she's so nurturing and supportive. She's very grounded. She does whatever she can for her family, for her friends, for her circle, you know, for those she cares for. And she does it in, a, in an unconditionally loving way. She still might be pretty stern with you, but that's only because she wants to see you succeed. Okay, and she's of earth, so she understands the hardships of life. She understands the process of material manifestation, okay? So some of you are really stepping into this power now. Ooh. Now, some of us have been in this for some time. Um, and if it's and if that's you, then it's like you're going through the last the last um you know, few pieces of that transformation. Now, here's the difficult energy. It's not that difficult. Some of us are struggling with it, okay? I'm not gonna lie, because that's what I'm feeling here. It is a bit of, it is a bit of, you know, a challenging energy. The best part about it is it's the, the Ten of Swords is here, okay? So what I'm getting, now, there, there's movement. This could be you, all right? So if this could be you in the process of getting to this Queen of Pentacles state here. This is what you're going through in order to, in, in terms of this transformation that's happening, okay? You have the Knight of Pentacles, slowest moving knight in the deck. Um, 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 um. This is Virgo energy, yep. Okay, now, this could be you or this could be someone else coming into your life, all right? You have the Seven of Swords here. The reason why you or this person is moving so slow is because of treachery, lies, deceit, backstabbing, cheating, stealing. Now, this could have been something that you've done to yourself also, okay? But either way, because of this, you're moving pretty slow. But that's a good thing. Slow and steady wins the race. You don't really want to rush into this new transformation. You want to make sure that you enter this situation as stable as possible. Four of Wands, okay? Ten of Swords. Now, the worst is behind you. That's a good thing, okay? You've surmounted the obstacles and you've come out on top. <laughs> Even if you're lying face down in the gutter, you still came out on top. Why? You survived. Okay, excellent. The hidden aspect, the card that fell out face down, is the Four of Swords. Needing to take a break. Okay, that's like the next step almost. Or you could already be in that energy of just taking a break. That is the, um, that's also the energy that's working behind the scenes universally right so it's also about the four of swords is like about meditation like taking a nap before you re-enter the battle um the four of swords is like the main the minor arcana version of the hanged man okay so the hanged man is all about um uh perspective seeing things in a different way enlightenment i really feel like right now and, and the reason why the four of swords laid well, came out face down is because the universe is kind of making uh, um, 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 almost forcing some of us to take this time take this rest take this break there may not be very much communication right now if any between you know uh partners potential mates whatever It's almost like the universe is forcing many of us to take a nap or take a time out. And it's not like we've done anything wrong, no. It's because we've reached the end of a major cycle. Okay, we have the Ten of Swords here, and we have the Wheel of Fortune here. Two tens are on the table right now. All right, so that's, that's completion. The Nine of Pentacles is about an ending. Nines are about endings. And so we have two tens here. 
marking the completion of these things. Many of it is mental in nature because of the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is like, it's about thoughts. Excuse me, swords are about thoughts, yeah? Okay, so, especially since I've got my unicorn coffee mug here, we're gonna go ahead and clarify with the unicorn tarot. <laughs> yes, honey. So let's get some clarification here for you guys. We're going to start with the Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Wands, and the Fool. Then we're going to move to the Queen of Pentacles and the Transformation. And then we're going to follow, move down to this final, final row here. Nine of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Ten of Swords, Four of Swords. Um, in, the, in yesterday's reading, Betsy did comment about there being so many swords on the table. And um, the, the, it was basically, you know, our egos getting in the way. And I absolutely agree. There has been a lot of purging. Well, the purging that we've been going through lately has been very much uh, egoic purging. Yes. I know that's for me. 100%. And to be quite honest, it's things that I've really been, I guess you could say, trying to purge for the longest time but haven't really successfully been able to do so. Well, now that has changed. <laughs> All right, so we're clarifying the Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Wands, and the Fool, please. <laughs> the Hierophant, the Magician. Underneath the deck is the Ten of Wands. Look, more completion. Now, the Ten of Wands, or in this deck, it's the Ten of Rods. This does talk about, it talks about burdens, okay? But let's see what else we have here. My, my, my. Some of you really are going into a new start. I'm hearing marriage. And I don't even have to hear it because it's in the cards right here. You've got the Hierophant and the Four of Wands again. My, 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 and look at that. You're manifesting this yourself, the Magician. Now, how are you manifesting this? By maintaining the vibration. This is, and okay, so here's the thing. This is what the Ten of Wands is talking about in this situation, okay? In order to continue to manifest this situation, you have to release yourself of all of the burdens. What are the burdens in this situation? Expectation. Expecting it to come from a certain person, expecting it to come at a certain time, expecting it to look a certain way, that kind of thing. Feel a certain way. You have to continue to consciously, consciously with the magician here, you have to continue to consciously release yourself from all of that. Okay? I'm going to I'm going to share a little bit of my experience here. I'm resonating with that. I am working on aligning myself with the vibration of that which I wish to receive. Marriage, family, a home, that kind of thing. So, I work on feeling that so i think about having that kind of thing and it generates this really good this really good feeling this really homely homey feeling and i'm building that experience within my heart right that is working on aligning with it i'm not getting wrapped up on expecting it to come from a specific person even though i have my ideas those are just ideas right now well, that's, and that's not as important as the feeling that's generated when I think about having this. And it, it just, it fills my heart right now just to think about it. You know, having a nice home with kids, dogs, a husband, like dogs, cats, birds, whatever. Whatever the kids want, you know, with a backyard and, and all that kind of stuff. Right? Thinking about taking the waking up in, in the morning, making coffee, probably doing a reading for everybody, and then making breakfast for the kids, getting them ready to go to school, blah, 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 that, you know, that kind of thing. Just thinking about that stuff, even just talking about it right now, it fills me with joy, okay? That is consciously 
aligning with the experience, not the not the expectation, with the aligning with the desire, and not expecting it to come from a specific person at a specific time. That doesn't matter. Let the universe handle that part of the situation. You just got to keep telling the universe what it is you want. And the more that you release yourself from these burdens, the expectations, everything that weighs you down, keeps you keeps you from moving into that space of energetic resonance the better your the better the universe can work with you to bring what it is you want to you four of wands and hierophant this is a marriage this is a commitment and if it's not if you don't necessarily want official marriage it's just a solid rock solid commitment okay so this is how because for the most part most of us that like most of us that watch these videos, we're of the we're of the feminine energetic collective, divine feminine energetic collective. Okay, most of us. I'm sure there are some masculine energies out there that watch this too. But if you're a masculine energy, then you are aligning with a queen of pentacles or your counterpart, whether it's male or female. Then you are aligning with the feminine counterpart to your masculine. But here, many of us are in the feminine collective. And so we are becoming the queen of pentacles. And if you're not already, if you're, if you are already in the queen of pentacles state, then your life is transforming to a place to bring you the marriage and the commitment that you want. Okay. So now let's clarify that queen of pentacles and transformation. Queen of Pentacles and Transformation, please, spirit. <laughs> yes, y'all. Wow. This is, I mean, you can't make this shit up, guys. Underneath the deck, you have the Ten of Pentacles. Good Lord, we might as well, wait, where's the Ten of Cups? <laughs> Whoa. Guys, this is amazing. Judgment and the Queen of Cups. Now. The Queen of Cups is saying to me, this is, um, this is psychic, psychic ability, okay? Many of you, <laughs> many of you might already be aware of who you're aligning with. Um, now, the Queen of Cups is also about emotion, okay? The Queen of Cups is very, very nurturing. She is just as nurturing, if not maybe more nurturing than the Queen of Pentacles, this is a good balance, okay? Because the Queen of Cups is very emotionally balanced. Now, she keeps her emotions to herself, in my opinion, more so than the King of Cups. The King of Cups is really much more willing to express his emotions. The Queen of Cups, unless you're like really close to her, she really doesn't, she doesn't let her emotions spill very often, okay? So what I'm feeling with this, the Queen of Cups and Judgment, I feel like there's a, a resurrection happening when it comes to your emotions. Okay. But you're also receiving some psychic attunements, if you haven't been already. But the biggest thing I'm getting with the Queen of Cups and Judgment is that um, your emotions are being grounded. Okay, you're getting some sort of resurrection. Also, your emotional stability is allowing you to answer this call to the, of the universe. And what is this call from the universe? It is the desire within you to have this family, to have this commitment, to have whatever it is the Ten of Pentacles is for you. Again, this is another depiction. Look at that. We've got the family right there. And you can consider the unicorn the family pet. I would love to have a unicorn. <laughs> oh, goodness. But there it is right there, guys. Your emotional balance is going to help you, all right? So a lot for a lot of you, the process that you're going through right now to get yourself to the Queen of Pentacles state is balancing your emotions, emotional purging, emotional clearing, because you don't want to go into this 
and this pair of font four of wands. And the other one was the ten of pentacles. You don't want to go into all that with a shit ton of emotional baggage. It's just going to derail the situation. So the universe is saying, listen here, we want to give you exactly what you want. So let's resurrect. Let's clean up the emotions. Let's let's balance them out. Okay? And get you started and get you on that path to becoming that wifey material. Right? Queen of Pentacles. Okay. So all of that is really quite beautiful. Now, the most challenging aspect is what's going on here. Things are moving pretty slow. Okay, but there's a lot of caution that's needed because of the Seven of Swords energy from the past. But luckily, luckily, that's all. Ooh, sorry, guys. That has come to an end because you have the Ten of Swords here. All right. But let's clarify this section. Please. Knight of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Ten of Swords, Four of Swords. Please, Spirit. There is definitely an ego death that's happening. Whoa. All right. Underneath the deck. Yes. Yes. Guys, the cards, the cards don't lie. Underneath the deck is the Eight of Pentacles. There's a lot of hard work that's happening right now. Okay. We have what came out, what fell on the Seven of Swords. Ooh. Okay. The Empress is in reverse here. And so that fell on the Seven of Swords. What fell on the Four of Swords? The Knight of Swords. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are all reversed, so I'm going to turn them over. We've got the Five of Swords. All right, Page of Wands. My, my, the King of Pentacles. Oh, my goodness, guys. This is a lot right now, but I'm going to talk about it, because we have the Emperor and we have the Empress here. The Empress fell in reverse on the Seven of Swords. Okay, so you're definitely aligning with a counterpart here, but you see the problem, we also have, we have two depictions of counterparts because now we have the King of Pentacles, okay? Oh boy, this is a lot. Um, what's going on here? Well, first of all, we've got this retrograde energy. Now, Venus is in retrograde, and what's happening here? Give me a second. Give me a second. This is a lot. I have to take it in. Okay. All right. Here's the deal. With the with the Knight of Pentacles, you have the Nine of Rods and the Four of Cups. Somebody's really on the defensive, and it makes perfect sense. Okay, because of the Seven of Swords that was here makes perfect sense. But there's also an energy of perseverance with the Nine of Rods. There is an offer here that's looking to be handed, maybe even looking to be received. You see how that angel is holding that cup off in the distance? But you see someone here is really quite focused on the Three of Cups right now. And look at what you have here, the Three of Cups. All right, now, in this case, what I'm getting is someone it's kind of because you have the Knight of Pentacles underneath the main deck, okay? So someone is very much focused on being single, being social, probably out getting out and dating. Someone feels like they kind of need that right now. All right, that's fine, you know, because here you have this angel that is holding up this Ace of Cups. Now, what I'm also getting with this Four of Cups here is someone is in the process of learning how to fill up their own cup because I'm really seeing that angel handing a brand new cup of to, to fill with love of the self to someone and then in turn they'll be able to share their cup with someone else okay yeah what I'm seeing I'm definitely seeing that with the three and the four of cups here three and the four of cups is talking about finding the joy to fill up your own cup with self-love all right and that's after all of this treachery and stuff. That's what's coming through here with, you know, 
the Seven of Swords, and then the, and the ending of it with the Ten of Swords. Now, you're going to do it like this. We have a depiction of Venus with the Empress, and we have the Retrograde with the Five of Swords, and that is what's standing between the counterpart. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but I'm going to take that as, as confirmation. That is what's standing between the counterparts here. And we definitely have the counterparts because we have the King of Pentacles. And here we have the Queen of Pentacles, all right? So the counterparts are going, are happening. But you see what's happening here with this masculine energy, with this, with this King of Pentacles, this counterpart, uh, redefinition. What is the word I'm looking for? Self-discovery. There we go. The masculine energies are going through, are going through an ascension. They're ascending. Some of them are, are kind of going through a dark night of the soul. I, I don't want to think, I don't want to say it's as rough as it, things might have been in the past. This might be a little bit of an easier one to get through. Okay. But, you know, for, for many of you, the counterpart that you're aligning with did kind of go through some sort of similar situation that you did. Now, I'm not saying they went through the exact same thing. I'm not saying it's going to look the exact same way. But what I am saying is emotionally and thematically, if that's even a word, it's similar. All right. Both of you dealt with treachery, lies, deceit of some sort, some, some way, some manner, deception. Both of you dealt with a pretty difficult ending with the Ten of Swords. All right. So now they're going through their healing process. Just like you went through yours. And finally, we have the Four of Swords with the Knight of Swords. Now, like I said, there's probably not much communication here. But let me tell you, let me tell you, when someone finally comes out of this Four of Swords energy, this respite, this nap, this timeout, they are going to want to communicate, honey, swiftly. I'm feeling a knight in shining armor vibe with this. But just like wanting to just rush in and communicate. Now, this also could be why someone is forcing themselves or the universe is forcing someone into a, a bit of a timeout because of how badly they want to communicate. How badly someone might want to just rush in and be that knight in shining armor or whatever. Just... Okay, but all in all, this is a really good reading, guys. It's a really good reading. These are very good energies. The one thing I want to tell you, the one bit of advice I want to give you is to stay here in this manifestation energy with the Hierophant, the Four of Wands, the Magician, underneath that all clarifying the Ten of the, the Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Wands, and the Fool. Okay? Stay here in the manifesting energy. Remember that when we clarified this part of the reading, the Ten of Wands was underneath the deck. Okay? So remember to keep removing yourself releasing yourself of expectations because those are the burdens that are going to hold you back from the fool, this new start, okay? But all in all, in the final clarification, with all of this stuff down here, underneath the deck, you have the Eight of Pentacles. So the work is being done. Some of you might be immersing yourself in work to kind of like take your mind off things, but I'm, I'm, I'm really getting because that, that's helping you because the more that you can keep your conscious mind occupied and out of the way, the easier it will be for the universe and your higher self to really help you with this transformation that's happening. Because the more you keep your conscious mind out of the way, the more you keep your ego out of the way, and then things can really move slow, move smoothly. Okay, with at least with the least resistance possible. Okay, but the work is being done, both physically and energetically, and that's beautiful, guys. 
So, Oracle. We're going to go with the Whispers of Love first, and then we're going to get our Crystal Mandala, yeah? Okay, guys. Let's see what we've got. Tuesday, November 6th. Demonstrate love. <laughs> Underneath the deck, you have Consider Your Foundation. And look, we've got the foundation twice here. The Four of Wands came out twice. The Four of Wands is clarifying the Four of Wands, y'all. Like, can I get an amen? Okay. But here, underneath the deck, you have consider your foundation. You are being asked to look at how committed you are to love. Okay. I'm trying to see what else that means, but I'm drawing a blank. I mean, that is part of this integration process. If you are truly committed to love, then you can hold this vibration that is manifesting this love for you without expectation. Because if you're committed to love, then love, well, love is always committed to us. We are love, okay? But if you, in turn, are giving back to love and committing yourself to it, then you have the utmost faith that at the right time, the right person is going to come around and is going to give you all of this stuff that you've been manifesting. Right? Excellent. So your card here is demonstrate love. Find out what is important to the people you love and act on it. This is very much an energy of getting to know each other. Learn about each other. Observe each other. What is it that makes each other happy? What is it that makes them feel loved? appreciated, wanted, and then take steps to follow through with that. How committed are you to love? How committed are you to getting to know somebody? I'm building that foundation, building that house, because look at that. There's that house right there. And the Ten of Pentacles did come out. While we were clarifying the Queen of Pentacles, that was on the bottom of the deck, the Queen of Pentacles and Transformation. There's that house, that foundation. So how committed are you to building this? Because this is not something that can go up overnight. Hell no. That is a beautiful house. It's going to take some time to build, honey. How committed are you to that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're closing the reading with the Crystal Mandala. Now these counter these are not just any counterparts, guys. These are divine counterparts, emperor and empress. I'm sorry, I feel like there's something that I didn't say with the emperor and the empress. I mean, the empress did fall on the seven of swords. But it's okay. The message came. It's okay. We got it. <laughs> we got it, Eric. Okay. Closing message, please, Spirit, for Tuesday, November 6th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. We've got, oh, boy. Wow, we've got two of them. All right, so underneath the deck, you have sacred play. So this is really just saying to have fun. Just have fun, you know? Go with the flow of things. Let things develop and have a good time in the process. There's no reason to not enjoy not enjoy this process, okay? We've got two cards here. We have card number 31, Unconditional Trust. That's Ascended Master Mother Mary and Celestite. Unconditional Trust, which makes perfect sense. And then we also have card number 37, Goddess Tara and Tibetan Quartz. Quartz, her eye ever open. So I'm going to read these really quick. 31. Okay, unconditional trust. I'm like coughing. He unicorn. Ha 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 unicorn. Okay. <laughs> unconditional trust. We bring you the blessing of unconditional trust. There are times when trust comes easily. 
Perhaps life is proceeding according to some sort of plan, or you have enough money to feel safe, sufficient prospects on the horizon to feel excited, and enough love in your relationships to feel wanted and valued. Then there are times when it is harder to trust. Perhaps none of the above pl applies to you. You are lost, feel alone, confused, and without a clear plan or sign of hope ahead. You may be alone. I'm sorry, you may be frightened and just want something to lift you out of the darkness and into the light. Your mind and perhaps your family and friends might tell you that this is a time that is crazy to trust. That uh, They may tell you that you should try to fix yourself, get real, give up, and get on with life. Do not listen to doubts or negativity in others or yourself. It is safe to trust. The Divine Mother is watching over you and will guide you safely into the new life awaiting you now. Boop. That's fantastic. And so finally, we have card number 37. Her eye ever open. We bring you the empowerment of her eye ever open. The divine protection around you is absolute and complete. Your simple request for the Universal Mother to watch out for you and to protect what has meaning for you allows you to live your life, do your work, and know the most powerful one is caring for your well-being on all levels. You can trust, be free from worry, and remain open to the world with joy in your heart. Two cards of... Two messages of being able to trust. I'm just seeing if there's anything else. Okay, I do want to read this one. Because this literally, this card is mirroring, <coughs> excuse me, is mirroring the, uh, reinforcing the message from unconditional trust here. And I want to read this paragraph because it specifically says some of the same things. If you allow the negativity of those in fear to become part of how you view yourself, you will undermine yourself. You will have allowed negativity to sabotage your spiritual light. This can happen when you take to heart, when you take to heart the critical remark of another who is more interested in criticizing others than focusing on their own personal healing. You may not wish to do it. You may even realize what is happening. And yet, their fear may still make you stumble a little, doubt yourself, or feel afraid that you might that if you keep shining bright, you might suffer attacks from others. You may even wonder why you have attracted this, that situation to yourself, which is a way healers can unintentionally use their intention to assume spiritual responsibility to undermine themselves. Being responsible for your own responses to the world is appropriate. Assuming that the consciousness that other chooses for themselves... Wait, hold on. Being responsible for your own responses to the world is appropriate. Assuming that the consciousness that another chooses for themselves is your doing is not. Ah, okay. If you do this, you are colluding with the fear, agreeing that it is appropriate behavior for another to blame you for their pain. That is not wise, true, or empowering for anyone. That's it. Wow. Excellent, guys. That's awesome. That was an awesome, awesome reading. So, Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you all have a great day. If you're here in the United States, please, please get out and vote, y'all. Yeah? Much love to you guys. And I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah? Take care. Bye.